gentlemen, welcome to Talk Time. I have with me today Dr. Lopsang Sange, the president of the Central Tibetan Administration or the Tibetan government in exile, joining me from Dharamsala. Dr. Sange is a hugely popular Tibetan leader representing the Tibetan diaspora around the world. Dr. Lopsang Sange, welcome to Northeast Live. Thank you very much. Good to be on your show on Northeast Live. Good to see you again. Absolutely good to see you again too, Dr. Sange. You know, during the past few weeks, we have once again witnessed aggressive behavior of the Chinese military in Ladakh and Sikkim. Does this surprise you, the military adventurism coming at a time when India is directing its resources to battling the COVID pandemic? Um, I would like to say no and yes. No in the sense, you know, when Tibet was occupied, Mao Zedong and Chinese leaders said Tibet is the palm and Ladakh, Sikkim, Nepal, Bhutan and Arunachal are five fingers. So once they occupied the palm, they are coming after five fingers. So the adventurism and incursions in you know, Ladakh and Sikkim are nothing surprising for us. In 2017, Doklam happened. Now it's in, happening in Ladakh. The infrastructure buildup of Chinese military, you know, it's huge in both the areas. So this is nothing surprising. Uh, so we've been saying all this time that after the occupation of Tibet, what happened to us could happen to all the neighboring countries, including India. Now, you know, you see what's happening in India or the, uh, the borders of India is what we have been saying for the last 60 years. So in a way, the whole world is focused on dealing with the coronavirus pandemic, which originated in China. And that's where the attention should be. And the, all these incursions are absolutely unnecessary and very insensitive at this time of the year, you know, but Chinese government is doing it. Now you see, Dr. Sangye, you know, many, many around the world look at this Beijing's posturing as some kind of a panic reaction. After all, you know, more than 120 nations now want a global investigation on the origin of the COVID-19 virus. That's true. WHO, which is normally neutral, and some of the officials could be China-leaning, you know, or China-sympathetic officials, have also resolved to investigate the origin of the coronavirus, which obviously happened in Wuhan, the city of China. So, you know, given the global attention and pressure on China, you know, and Chinese leadership seems to be a bit nervous as well. So from what I hear in Tibet, all the monasteries are shut down. Monks and nuns are not allowed to venture out of the district. They have to seek permission. Out of the state, you have to seek permission from the state. So you can clearly see they are not allowing even Tibetans to move from district to district and from state to state. So that shows the panoroya or you know, the insecurity uh, in China. So this is the external pressure of WHO and the trust deficit of pandemic that has generated against China and the internal pressure, you know, to the Chinese leadership in dealing with coronavirus and other internal issues. They are trying to divert attention by, you know, uh, what they call externalizing the problem with this border incursion in India and also, you know, uh, in South China Sea and various other places. Right. You know, are you, are you among those who is prepared to believe that the novel coronavirus is a man-made virus produced by the Chinese, possibly at a lab in Wuhan. Do you see it as a biological weapon that was leaked perhaps to the world? Now, it's difficult to say. Let the WHO-led scientists investigate this issue thoroughly and come out with the objective report. And uh, having said that, but there are some indications that whether it's intentionally, intentionally or not, the virus is leaked from the, you know, the bio lab, which was in Wuhan. Because in the, some of the state departments, you know, reports say that when some of the staff members and scientists visited, the infrastructure, the uh, quality control, 
uh, the safety measures are not in good place. So intentionally or not, you know, it could have been leaked from the lab. But let the scientists of WHO confirm this and, uh, you know, let the whole world know. But definitely the coronavirus originated in Wuhan, the city of China, which Chinese government is trying to deny. Absolutely. You know, coming back to the aggressive uh, Chinese military posturing, you know, the Indian military or the Indian security establishment today is not that which we had in 1962. Our military machine today is advanced leaps and bounds. The Chinese are well aware of this and still they regularly create situations along the line of actual control that can well lead to a sharp confrontation. Why so? Why so, according to you? Look, I think, you know, China has this ambition to become a world leader. Unfortunately, if you look at the, you know, a global transformation when the world leader comes up, whether it was the British or before that, any empire, you know, there has to be a flexing of muscle and which leads to war. Yeah. And then, you know, a, a leader comes up. So, you know, that's the story of First World War, Second World War, or the British rule, or before that, right, Roman Empire, and so on and so forth. So Chinese government is flexing its muscle, military muscle, and India happens to be the largest populated country in Asia, which can go toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, as far as, you know, population is concerned, as far as, you know, uh, military capacity is concerned. So I think, you know, it could be testing its water. But definitely, you know, since the occupation of Tibet, since the border between Tibet and India changed to India and China, all these tensions have come and it will continue to come till Tibet issue is resolved. Now, you have been saying in, in the last couple of days, in the last couple of days uh, during several interviews, you have been saying, uh, Dr. Sange, that you would expect India uh, to do a little bit more. You know, what do you mean by that, actually? Well, in the China and the Chinese government clearly says Tibet is one of their core issues, so very important. Xi Jinping is on the record in saying that the security and stability of China is dependent on security and stability of Tibet. Now, for various reasons, historical relationship, cultural relationship, our you know, Tibetan alphabets, our religion, right. you know, all are associated uh, some originated from India, right? So we have all these factors and the bond that we have. And most importantly, geopolitically, yeah. Tibet is vital. So hence, India also should say, if China, Tibet is core issue for you, then for India also, Tibet is a core issue. Let's resolve, let's resolve this issue of Tibet and then, you know, make Tibet a zone of peace and make this border a demilitarized zone, as His Holiness Dalai Lama said, then there will be a perpetual peace between the two of the largest populated countries and two of the largest, you know, military uh, uh, capacities. So that's, you know, uh, what we say. And then, you know, when we solemnly says about zone of peace and demilitarized, uh, you know, border, he's essentially referring to historical relationship between Tibet and India. You know, Tibet was the buffer zone between India and China. And the, the border in, from Arunachal to, you know, the whole of Northeast, the border of Tibet barely had even policemen, forget about military and border security force, they were barely policemen because border was so peaceful, it was demilitarized, right? So hence, we must return back to that you know, relationship to have perpetual peace between, you know, Tibet and India and uh, India and China. Well, uh, since you referred to His Holiness, uh, the Dalai Lama, you know, the Dalai Lama had said, uh, of course, now it's a different matter that he has given up uh, active political, uh, you know, his responsibilities. But he has been saying that, you know, we are not a secessionist movement. We are determined to have our status back. And even if Tibet continues to be a part of China, if we are given our rights, self-determination, we'll be happy. Has that position remains the same or do you think that position has changed? Yeah, we follow, you know, Mahatma Gandhi's... Uh 
in the principle of ahimsa. We, so we follow nonviolence as a principle. And, you know, ultimately, you have to talk to the Chinese government to solve the issue of Tibet. So the Chinese government says sovereignty and territorial integrity of China cannot be compromised. And his Solonist Dalai Lama came forth, uh, came forth and said, OK, give us genuine autonomy for all the Tibetan areas and Tibetan people, and we will be content with that. So that's what we propose. Uh, Dr. Sanghe, you know, in view of the recent, uh, you know, Chinese aggression or, or aggressive poaching along the border, uh, you know, an Indian activist in Ladakh recently gave out a call to boycott Chinese goods, and this has almost turned into a nationwide movement. Now, my question is, how do you look at this? Can sanctions like these work at the level of the people, at the level of the citizens? I know you're referring to uh, philanthropists and environmentalists and activists, uh, Sonam Wongchuk. Uh, you know, he is, you know, at the border um, and uh, the people at the border of Ladakh, they feel the pain whenever there is incursion. And if there is, in fact, an invasion, they will be the first victim. They will be the first one to suffer. Right. So when there is something, you know, people of India should play, pay uh, close attention and, uh, and feel their pain and listen to them. You know, so I'm glad that his message has gone viral and you know, people all over India are paying attention. Now, as far as you know, his call is concerned, I, I've been on the record to say that it is for the government to decide. If government wants to limit products from certain country, they could do so by imposing tariffs, right? American government you know, impose high tariffs on Chinese goods and thereby limiting the import of Chinese right. goods to America. So government can do certain things. Now, at the people level too, you know, one should fully understand that national security is very important, should proceed over your entertainment and fun. So if there are some Chinese apps that you're using for fun, then, you know, if it yeah. indicates support for the Chinese government, then, you know, you should be very sensitive and you can get away, you know, do away with these apps. Having said that, people will buy things, you know, where it is affordable because that much they can afford to. But as far as celebrities are concerned, in the Bollywood actors and yeah. cricketers, you know, they have huge following. They endorse many Chinese brands. They are doing it simply for money. You know, they already have made so much money, they can live their life comfortably, and they are endorsing this brand simply to make extra money, extra bucks, which they don't need, Absolutely. which they can afford not to have, right? So when they endorse these, you know, brands, what happens, all the followers and the fans, they think, oh, my, you know, Bollywood idol and cricket idol is saying this, so Let for the sake of it, this. I'll buy it. Yeah. And when they buy it, you know, and then... The, obviously, they buy less of India-made products and they buy more of Chinese-made products, right? So and Prime Minister Modi ji and others are calling for make in India and, and self-reliance, right? To make India a self-reliant country. But the participation of the population is very important. And for that, right. celebrities have a huge role to play. So right. if they can endorse more Indian-made goods for less fees, then they should do so, right. which benefits the country and which benefits their pocket also. On that note, we'll go for a short break, but don't go away. I'll be right back. I'm in conversation with Dr. Lopsang Sange, the president of the Central Tibetan Administration or the Tibetan government in exile. <music> Welcome back. I am in conversation with Dr. Lopsang Sange, the president of the Central Tibetan Administration or the head of the Tibetan government in exile. Are you convinced that China is embarking on aggressive maneuvers towards India and Hong Kong primarily to divert its own people's attention from the situation at home or from internal pressures triggered perhaps by US actions insofar as trade and business are concerned? Both. As I said, this is China's age-old plan. Tibet is the palm, and then five fingers are Ladakh, Sikkim, Nepal, Bhutan, and Arunachal. So the border incursions will happen. Pressure on Nepal will happen. Certain changes are happening in Nepal, as we all know, mainly because of the Chinese government's pressure, right? So it's more leaning 
towards China than towards India. So all these, you know, changes in the neighboring countries are because of Chinese government pressure and all happened after the occupation of Tibet. That's number one. So that will continue. Number two, at this given time, China is under tremendous pressure. Within China, some people are saying the Chinese leadership d did not handle coronavirus, yeah. trade relationship with uh, America, and also with Europe, right? Trust deficit that has happened. You know, certain uh, Chinese uh, business people are also looked as new colonialists in African uh, continent as well, right? right? So all this pressure are building within China. And then obviously, you know, they want to clamp down uh, on Tibetans and Uyghurs and other people within China, and then, you know, impose security law in Hong Kong. So that shows that this bit of paranoia and nervousness within and external pressure. So they have to divert their attention and hence the incursion uh, at the border of India and South China Sea and the rest of the world. You see, yeah, that is very interesting. You know, that could be one of the reasons that's what you were saying. But by routinely claiming Indian territories like Arunachal Pradesh and other parts, do you think China actually has been trying to keep New Delhi's focus on the border, trigger an arms race perhaps, and make sure India spends more and more money on defense and so on? That could be the uh, calculation as well. And also, because of this global trust, now the 130 countries, you know, at WHO coming together to investigate China is a no small thing, yeah. right? So a lot of alliances are formed, right? And democracies uh, are forming alliances and China being a major player, you know, uh, uh, Chinese government is trying to distract uh, New Delhi's attention uh, from uh, aligning with uh, global power, yeah. you know, vis-a-vis -vis China, right? So uh, all these are being uh, uh, played out. Uh, having said that, you know, uh, Chinese government, you know, you have to be uh, very, very careful because, you know, this year is the 70th anniversary of bilateral diplomatic relationship between India and China, which means yeah. India left Taiwan and recognized China thereby recognized, its, you know, and fully supported its membership at the United Nations and the, Nation and the Security Council of the United Nations, right? Now, this year should be a year of celebration. China should be thanking India for the diplomatic relationship and all the support is extended to have China to be a member of the Security Council of the United Nations. Yeah. Instead of appreciating India's gesture, 70 years ago, there are, you know, in, the, the, there are incursions at the border of India. I mean, can you imagine that? Now, also, some military experts say that the border incursion in Ladakh, the buildup to bring around seven to 8,000 Chinese military personnel took anywhere from five to six months, right? You know, that much of time it takes to build up that kind of military, right? So, now, what happened six months ago in October, President Xi Jinping visited Tamil Nadu and Prime Minister Modi welcomed him. And the major summit, after Wuhan summit, the major summit happened in South India while Chinese military was preparing to have a military buildup and incursion in Ladakh. Right. So this is the Chinese government we are dealing with. So you have to be very, very careful. No, that's no, that's no, what we want to say. Right. Now, now you talked about the popular government in India uh, you know, uh, led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And you also mentioned how the Chinese uh, leader, Xi Jinping, visited Ahmedabad earlier and last time in October in Tamil Nadu. And, you know, still you find aggression by the Chinese suddenly. So the Chinese obviously cannot be trusted, isn't it? That's our experience, you know. When Chinese army, first Chinese, first came to Tibet, they came in the name of peaceful liberation, prosperity for Tibetan people. We will build one road for you connecting China to Tibet. This will bring a lot of business, a lot of, you know, opportunities for Tibetan people. So we thought, you know, Chinese government meant very yeah. well. And ultimately, we lost our country. Now all our natural resources are exploited, gold, copper, lithium, you just name, all our water are exploited, dams after dams are being built. You know, so environmental destruction is taking place. 
plundering of Tibet is taking place, which is a fact. So this is, you know, our experience. So that's why we always say what happened to Tibet could happen to you. And it's happening at the borders of India. Soon it will start happening inside of India also. So you have to be very, very careful. No. Study Tibet, Tibet issue. Learn lessons from Tibetan experience. If you want to truly understand China, you have to know Tibet. That is the lesson. Right. Now, Dr. Sangye, you know, in what way would you like the United States or the world community to respond vis-a-vis -vis China? After all, China may be the world's manufacturing hub, but the market obviously is outside China's borders, obviously. The entire market is outside China's borders. Yes, you know, China is the manufacturing hub, but they have to sell. Yeah. So the market is Europe and America mainly, you know. So, you know, if you want to sell, the, we always say buyers are the masters, you know, are the gods, right? So customers are your god. That's what you are taught in business. Yeah. So the customers are Europe and America. So they are already taking actions, you know. So imposing high tariffs on Chinese goods, uh, you know, in America and support for Tibet Bill, Tibetan Policy and Support Act. Uh, and then, you know, recently, uh, during the Pension Lama's disappearance of 25th anniversary, uh, uh, came about the U.S. Uh, State Department, uh, you know, the Secretary of State, uh, Mike Pompeo himself, issued a statement. And the Ambassador for Religious Freedom, Brown Bag, issued a statement. Uh, 180 members of parliament from 15 countries, mainly in Europe, issued various statements supporting Pension Lama. So the global support for Tibet remains strong. And I'm glad that, you know, people are in India also are you know, more interested and people in Northeast through your channel are paying interest because Brahmaputra, which is the lifeline for Assam and Northeast, flow from Tibet, right? And there is, uh, you know, you can clearly see a decrease in the volume of rivers, water, and, uh, you know, uh, Tibet is vital as right. far as water resources are concerned. These are the things people ought to know. Now, uh, my, uh, my my last two questions to you. You referred to the Brahmaputra. Mm. Uh, do you believe mm. that the Chinese are really embarking on a plan to divert the Brahmaputra? Do you think that the Chinese are really building dam after dam after dam in the upper reaches, which can have a disastrous impact in the lower riparian areas like Northeast India? Um, yes, um, you know, in, from our experience in major rivers of Tibet, dams after dams are built uh, for hydropower and these private Chinese companies are generating huge amount of profit, you know, by selling uh, Tibetan waters. So, you know, I'm not surprised uh, that if they build more dams over, you know, uh, Brahmaputra River and other rivers, uh, Satlaj and Indus River also, right? And uh, diversion, you know, we do believe because a diversion will happen because, you know, China has 13% of the world population, but only 7% yeah. of fresh water. So already China is facing scarcity of fresh water, Absolutely. especially north and northeast Absolutely. of China, right? right. So if there, if there is a river in Tibet, including Brahmaputra, Indus and Satlaj, if they can divert towards their own people, why would they not do it? Because don't you think they would want to give water to their own people who are facing crisis, then let it flow uh, downstream, right? And conveniently, China has not signed the UN Convention on Water Absolutely. Sharing. Yes. So they are not obligated by international norms to share water, right? So why wouldn't they do that? And in fact, there is a case in Yunnan. They are diverting a river and they are developing a technology to divert river. This this trial has been going on for you know, several years now. If this succeeds, if this project succeeds, then, you know, they could use the same technology to divert river right. from Tibet, you know, uh, right. to other places in China. Now, my final, my final question to you, Dr. Lobsang Sangye, can China really ignore the Indian market, market of 1.3 billion people? If yes, can the Chinese behavior in the days ahead change for the better? They cannot ignore uh, India's market because, you know, U.S. government is imposing a lot of tra tariffs, uh, limiting, you know, import from China. And some of the European countries are doing the same, right? So they need market. And India of 1.3 billion it's a very attractive market. So, you know, you have 
a major say. And the Indian people, Indian government has a major say in how much a products you want to buy from home, right? So ultimately, it's business. You know, we are not saying don't do business with China or you know don't have diplomatic relationship with China. Yeah. But whenever you do, you must make more money. You should profit. At the moment, the trade, the trade deficit is against India, right? By you know, yeah. uh, seventy-five yeah. percent against twenty-five percent. Absolutely. So that that has to be balanced. And then you know, Modi just called for make in India, you know, uh, and then sell you know, for Indian people uh, should be you know. Uh, you know, implemented more vigorously, and people should pa participate, you know, more fully, uh, so that you know you become more self-reliant. Absolutely, Dr. Lop Lopsang Sangye, the head of the Tibetan government in exile, the president of the Central Tibetan Administration. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to me on Northeast Live. Thank you so much. Good to be on your show. Pleasure is mine.